Welcome to Discover with Dr. Dan, the proactive health podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Brilliant, an innovative proactive wellness company. Brilliant helps people live a healthier, happier life by discovering and using bioactive compounds from plants to formulate products to help them discover and unleash their innate brilliance. See philbrilliant.com for more information. Today, we are delighted to have on the show Dr. Uma Naidu, a Harvard-trained nutritional psychiatrist, professional chef, and nutrition specialist who penned the recent book, This Is Your Brain on Food. She founded and directs the first hospital-based nutritional psychiatry service in the United States and is the director of nutritional and lifestyle psychiatry at Massachusetts General Hospital and director of nutritional psychiatry at MGH Academy while serving on the faculty at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Uma is a regular expert resource for media and has appeared in publications including the Wall Street Journal, the Boston Globe, Goop, and more, and in appearances including ABC News, Live with Kelly and Ryan, and Today. And a little bit about her amazing book, this, the description is as follows. Did you know that blueberries can help you cope with the after effects of trauma, that salami can cause uh, depression, or that boosting vitamin D intake can help treat anxiety? When it comes to diet, most people's concerns involve weight loss, fitness, cardiac health, and longevity. But what we eat affects more than our bodies. It also affects our brains. And recent studies have shown that diet can have a profound impact on mental health conditions ranging from ADHD to, to depression, anxiety, sleep disorders, OCD, dementia, and beyond. A triple threat in the food space, Dr. Uma Naidu is a board-certified psychiatrist, nutrition specialist, and professionally trained chef. In This Is Your Brain on Food, she draws on cutting-edge research to explain the many ways in which food contributes to our mental health and shows how a sound diet can help treat and prevent a wide range of psychological and cognitive health issues. Packed with fascinating science, actionable nutritional recommendations, and delicious brain-healthy recipes, This Is Your Brain on Food is the go-to guide to optimizing your mental health with food. To learn more, go to book.umanadumd.com. So Dr. Uma, again, we're so excited to have you with us. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan. I'm excited to be here, and thank you for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. So uh, let's talk about uh, nutritional psychiatry. That's a word that I, that I would venture our listeners don't know about. So what is nutritional psychiatry? <laughs> You know, Dr. Dan, it's really the use of healthy whole foods and nutrients to improve our mental well-being, very simply put. And it really is not about um, 10 milligrams of Prozac or other medication versus 10 blueberries. Mm -hmm. It's really about how we integrate both in order to really achieve mental fitness, which has become so important, especially during the times of the pandemic, where many more people are just struggling with things like insomnia, worsening mood, or level of stress that is, you know, unbounded in these times. Mm -hmm. So I think it just beca be behooves us to start paying a little bit of attention to how we could tweak that with more tools than just medications. Um, and that's where food can be really powerful right at the end of our fork. Okay. So the phrase is, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And uh, yes. you are what you eat. Is, our, is that uh, accurate here? It is absolutely accurate, certainly in the perspective that we have to eat. We eat meals every day. It's something that we're doing as part of our lifestyle. So why not use that to the best advantage, especially for our brain health? Right. Um, I travel a lot in Asia. I'm a natural products chemist and I s discover compounds in plants. And it's interesting going to these places in Asia. I was sitting at a, at a really small, couldn't be called a restaurant, you know, it's just a really small mom and pop shop. And I noticed in normal places, the waiter or owner will come up to you and say, what do you want to eat? Uh, this, this owner of the restaurant came up and said, how are you feeling today? And, you know, the person That's said, well, <laughs> you know, my, my back is hurting or, or, or whatever. And <laughs> they, they went back into the kitchen and made something there. So I, I found that that was really, Amazing. really interesting. That is fascinating. I love that. So, um, when it comes to food, so we eat food, it goes into our gut. Uh, so how does that mm -hmm. impact our brain? You would think that it's, you know, it goes into our dig digestive tract, you know, provides right. energy to the body and is excreted. Right. Um, so how does that affect the brain? 
Absolutely. So, you know, it's not something that's necessarily, for, for one thing, Dr. Dan, you know, um, those uh, those of us who went to medical school, may, um, you know, may, maybe a few decades ago, mm-hmm. um, wouldn't have really learned about the gut microbiome because the science is newer. Uh, yet between 2013 and 2017, there have been about 13,000 new publications on the research around the gut-brain axis and gut microbiome. Why is that significant? Because it's newer science, it's emerging, and it's revolutionary and exciting. But what it also has taught us in the mental health realm is that the gut and brain are far apart in the body, but they actually start off from the same exact cells in the embryo mm. and then form these different organs. And then the gut and brain remain connected throughout life by the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve. Mm. And the vagus nerve essentially is, a, is like a bidirectional superhighway, allowing for chemical messages to be transmitted back and forth all the time. Um, the other thing that, that we don't often put together is that there are lots of medications that people know about called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right. like Prozac or Zoloft or others. But more than 90% of those receptors are in the gut. So when we understand that, we realize all of these systems communicate. And then for pandemic times, it's important for us to know that about 70% or more of our immune system is in the gut as Mm. well. So when you put all of these facts together, you think about you eat something, it gets digested, um, it begins the process the moment you start eating it. But when it gets broken down in that gut, right, in, in, in the gut, we now understand there are microbiota. There are 39 odd trillion microbes of five different kinds, at least. Mm, wow. And they're living there to help support us. They're there to help our physical health, our mental health, our immunity, our sleep, our circadian rhythms, our hormone balance, all of these different things and so much more. And the food products that we eat can either help really nurture these gut microbes. Right. Or they can, there are good and bad ones there, right? Mm -hmm. They can nurture the good microbes or the bad guys. And a healthier choice of food really will help the good microbes to thrive and do their function. When they function well, we feel good, we feel balanced, we we move on with life. We might even lose weight. Uh But when we are eating less healthy foods, the bad microbes are fed. They overcome the good microbes. And that's when toxic substances start to get produced. It's a setup for inflammation in the gut and inflammation in the brain. And that's the loop that connects the gut and brain, but also the part that brings in mental health. Wow. So what do bad bacteria like to eat versus what do good bacteria in the gut like to eat? I know you're not going to be surprised by this one, but I bet I, I bet a few people don't realize that these the things I'm about to mention also impact your mental health. I mean, right. we know about type 2 diabetes and gaining some extra pounds during COVID. But things like processed and ultra-processed refined sugars Mm -hmm. um, in foods actually have been associated with worsening depression and anxiety. Processed, ultra-processed junk foods, which have additives and and stabilizers and colorants and dyes, preservatives, added sodium, are also disruptive to our emotional health. Mm -hmm. Um, processed vegetable oils that are often found or used in fast food restaurants because they're less expensive actually are pro-inflammatory so they can be leading to more inflammation in our body um, you know and and disruption in the gut things like artificial sweetness Mm -hmm. actually worsen symptoms and are not great for us and there are several other things but those are the top ones for us to start thinking about interesting Wow, that, that's fascinating. So when it comes to good bacteria, are they producing neurotransmitters that then go to the brain or are they interacting via like a signaling pathway, signal transduction or? So they are basically working in the gut microbiome, simply put. They're mm-hmm. interacting with the breakdown products of food. So a good product to be formed by those by those microbes would be something like short chain fatty acids. Okay. And then they begin begin a whole cascade of interactions. And you know, ne- neurotransmitters are also involved. The way that we want to think about it, Dr. Dan, is that those microbes function optimally when they are fed well. Mm-hmm. And so all of their signal and transduction pathways, all of the biochemical reactions going on, all of the chemical and chemicals and neurochemicals being produced, neurotransmitters, everything is also associated with the environment where they're made. And that's where food okay. comes into comes into play. Wow. So a lot of our listeners are wondering here, 
What types of food should we eat for good mental health? Absolutely. So, you know, I'd like to start um, by un- helping people understand that it's not an overnight plan. I know that right. we sometimes want a quick fix and want to feel better immediately, right. especially if you're not feeling good. But really eating for our better mental health is a slow and steady process. Mm. So any step away from sort of what we've often called the standard American diet is going to right. be good for our mental health and our physical health. So you can start with something super simple, things like adding a ton of plant-based vegetables and fruit to your diet. So think about your dinner plate or your lunch plate, add a lot of colorful vegetables Mm -hmm. because they bring back fiber, um, polyphenols, which are important for your gut, important antioxidants, great anti-inflammatory substances. So think of the colors of different vegetables. And you want to add more of those in because they also bring back fiber. And fiber supports your gut. It's in, in fact, we often counting protein grams, but we should be worried about the fiber we're eating because uh-huh. it's important for our health. Right. Another important one is leafy greens because things like folate and leafy greens, low folate levels are associated with depression mm. and low mood and actually loss of brain cells. So the more folate and leafy greens we're eating in our diet, think kale, spinach, dandelion greens, arugula, whatever you enjoy, the greener the better, those actually support better mental health. Then you can think of uh, things like omega-3 fatty acids, which you can get from sockeye salmon. Um, They actually have been shown in clinical trials in humans to improve depression and improve anxiety. So a good food to add right there. But if you don't eat seafood, you can also get it from plant-based sources. Chia seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, and several others. Those are the short-chain omega-3s still benefit you. And then there are other groups of foods like prebiotics, which we often overlook. Yeah. Prebiotics are things like garlic, onions, um, the allium family, leeks, um, bananas, oats, and more. So those actually, again, are great for your gut. And I like to say happy gut is a happy mood. So so as we think okay. about feeding these microbes, you're actually uplifting your mood and you're balancing your anxiety. Um, now, you can also get, many people may take probiotics as a supplement. Right. But if you, you, if you don't, you can actually eat a lot of fermented foods. So kimchi, okay. miso, uh, kefir, kombucha, all of those are things. And many others, you can add in fermented foods to your right. diet. So those are, those are just some starting points for you. Okay. Spice is another, is another big, right. easy one to do. But these, these are all things that you can start doing. Wonderful. Um, yeah, with uh, fermented foods, it's interesting. I was reading some papers on uh, what they're calling psychobiotics now. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's it's an it's I'm very excited about the sort of emerging science that's coming out surrounding right. whether we can actually use food groups to form positive substances um, and maybe move away from certain medications, but use food and the byproducts to actually support our gut health to improve our mental health. So it's, uh, it's, it's all coming out. It's all being studied as you yeah. know, but it's, it's very exciting. So you mentioned spices, um, would, would certain types of food that use a lot of spices like uh, Thai food, Indian food, could those potentially be a little bit better when it comes to nutritional? So, sure. So, you know, when I say spices, I actually mean the actual spice that you can add okay. into things. Um, certainly, certainly certain cuisines use more of those spices, but sometimes certain cuisines, um, may or may not prepare it in, in the in, in the most healthy way, mm. um, in the sense that we, you know studies have shown that when we um, prepare food at home, we consume fewer calories, even if we're not following a special diet. Mm. So there's something we said for maybe you don't cook with turmeric, but you can add it to tea, a soup, or a smoothie. Okay. You know, there's uh, but if you do cook, you can start incorporating those in. So you're right; certain cuisines use more of those spices, and they may be healthier, but I always have a little bit as a chef I always have an eye out for I'm not actually sure how they're preparing it unless I see it so right um, you know I, I just just want to point that out to, to people but you know things like um, turmeric and saffron have been studied in depression um, oregano has mm-hmm. uh, good results in terms of depression so these are things you can sprinkle on vegetables or you can add into the food that you're making and so many more so what I do um, in each chapter in my book is I talk about different spices that have okay. been linked to uh, different conditions and then you know don't overlook herbs because right. they can make great teas like passion flower lavender can be very calming to the system uh, in a tea so. wow sounds like a great read I look forward to uh, to reading it so Thank you. when it comes to foods, there's uh, frozen foods, for instance, you know, frozen uh, yeah. blueberries, 
frozen green beans mm -hmm. versus the uh, fresh stuff you get at the store or farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Is there any difference in uh, bioactive compounds, these uh, nutritional, mm -hmm. so these nutritional psychiatric compounds? Dan. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think it's actually something that people, uh, is, it's important for people to know both from being cost effective and um, actually being nutrient dense is that frozen foods in the U.S. are flash frozen. So they're mm -hmm. frozen at their peak. And so if you're getting, say, frozen uh, blueberries or frozen cauliflower or broccoli, they're actually really good for you and maybe more cost effective. You buy a large frozen bag for your family. Mm. Um, they last, they're less fragile, and they don't necessarily go bad because they're frozen. And they're very nutrient dense. So I, you know, if, if you can't, um, you don't have access to farmer's market or you don't see a vegetable that you like, definitely consider the frozen. Um, but then there are also some other cool things like, you know, uh, uh, wild blue blueberries have twice the number twice the amount of antioxidants. So mm. if you see those in your frozen section, pick some up. Uh, there's all these neat little things that you learn as you go through it. And what about organic versus uh, non-organic foods? Is there any research there? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, because we know that the foods that are basically uh, related to chemical use and, um, you know, uh, glyphosates and things like th like that 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 are basically essentially been shown in several studies to be not so great for us mm -hmm. organic is generally preferred but i also understand not everyone has access to that right. so i like to get guide people around the use of frozen foods which can be cost effective but also when they're buying fresh produce to look at things like the environmental working group has two lists the okay. dirty dozen list um, and the clean 15. Um, and what they, what that does for you, you can actually find it, look at it on your phone. Um, it gives you guidance around the things you should try to go organic. So strawberries are one good example. They often at the top of that list okay. uh, of the dirty dozen list. So, you know, maybe think about that, but then you may not have to get on the clean 15. You can save some money by getting those non-organic. Um, and, you know, if you, if, if you don't have access in that way, and some of these options like a side of salmon is too expensive. You uh -huh. can get those as canned foods. So canned oysters, canned mussels, canned salmon are great brain foods. They're okay. rich in omega threes. They have zinc. All all good for you. And you know, so are plant based proteins like legumes and lentils, mm -hmm. which can be canned or large bags, which are cost effective as well. So there are ways to balance this up and still eat for your better brain health. Wow. So that's wonderful. I think a lot of times we might feel bad that we don't have access to farmer's market. And so I think it's comforting yeah. uh, from the information that you gave that uh, if, if we're buying these things, regardless of where we're getting them, we're still getting some of these uh, vital nutrients some that nutrients. help with nutritional value. Wonderful. Absolutely. So uh, what foods should we not eat then when it comes to <laughs> uh, mental health and uh, right. nutritional psychiatry? Absolutely. So you won't be surprised by some of them, but, but many people don't realize that there's actually evidence that s all of these food groups and foods actually worsen mental health symptoms. So okay. the added and refined sugars um, are not just associated with type 2 diabetes and obesity anymore. They're associated with worsening symptoms of just, just to name a few, depression and anxiety. Artificial sweeteners, unfortunately, are disruptive to that gut microbiome and worsen symptoms and actually can worsen symptoms of things like anxiety. Then there's trans fats. Trans fats in certain studies have actually been associated with worsening behavioral aggression. Wow. Um, so something to think about there. And then these uh, processed, ultra-processed sort of junk foods and fast foods have a lot of uh, preservatives and colorants and dyes and stabilizers that are not great for us okay. and actually impact our mental health. So, you know, I go, go down and then processed vegetable oils is another big one. Okay. Uh, they're often used in fast food restaurants because they're less expensive uh, to use and they are uh, unfortunately pro-inflammatory. So they, they, they really set up our bodies for inflammation, mm -hmm. something we want to be a little bit careful about. And so those are just at the top of the list and there are uh, more that I go to uh, go, go through in the book. Wonderful. Good guidelines. So when it comes to good food for mental health, and you mentioned a lot of them, yeah. are there different types of food we want to use uh, for anxiety and depression versus uh, ADHD, sure. OCD? Is there, are, are there uh, nuances Absolutely. there or is it kind of general? So there are nuances um, uh, and tweaks that you can make in every okay. chapter. So the way to think about the book is that, you know, it's really intended to be um, a guide mm -hmm. towards your men better mental well-being. 
so so it, it's meant to be a guide for your better well-being and essentially um for example let's take anxiety um right. anxiety is actually worsened by artificial sweetness whereas in a different condition it may be that the artificial sweetness are more disruptive to the gut and causing a problem there mm-hmm. if you look at ocd there are certain foods that wake, make those symptoms worse so we know that you know msg and um and other glutamates can be problematic for people but there's an example where there may be glutamates in some regular foods that you're eating um right. uh, and naturally found in say uh, tomatoes or mushrooms but you if you have ocd you might want to be a little bit careful about that because okay. they could worsen your symptoms so there's those nuances and in each chapter on the different on the different foods but there also if someone was just listening today and wants to start making some healthy changes you can go to those large food groups i mentioned because there's really good evidence around um a colorful um rainbow of uh, plants that you can add to your diet um you know those leafy greens and those types of things that you can start to do immediately wonderful so um been thinking a lot there's uh, diets are all the rage right now and they always have been Mediterranean, paleo, <laughs> bean diets, a juice diet, a traditional low fat diet, <laughs> cookie, cookie diet, <laughs> the, the, the cookie diet. Right. Um, so are there certain diets that are better than others when it comes to nutritional uh, psychiatric health? You know, Dr. Dan, and I think you'll appreciate this from your, your science and research background is that over time it's become so highly personalized for individuals you know because the the gut microbiome is like is, is like a thumbprint so yeah. it really has become more personalized um and that being said i think that the most amount of evidence is associated in depression and anxiety and other mental health conditions which with the overarching mediterranean diet okay um what i i add nuances um to that about are some people don't eat certain seafood or certain meats then you want to think about how do you make that the plant based version of that diet really good for the person and their mental health the other caveat or nuance is really around in mental health someone may be struggling with their weight either from a side effect of a medication right. or because they say so severely depressed they're not able mm-hmm. to exercise so in instances like that i'm really careful about personalizing how they take in their carbohydrates when they're trying to lose some of that weight because just saying to them sure eat healthy whole grains which i know are part of the mediterranean diet you might want to tweak that and we are use things like uh, tcr which is the therapeutic carbohydrate um reduction in terms of helping individuals really understand maybe for that phase they eat lower glycemic fruit like berries mm-hmm. um and still eat fruit because it's a healthy food and uh, and um really be a little bit careful about where they get the carbohydrate sources from so that they can help uh, lose some weight as they improve their mental health as well okay wonderful so a lot of people want to eat healthy they want to eat good food they want to prepare food but they're running they're coming and going and a lot of times yeah. we end up uh you know just grabbing something real quick something convenient so yeah. Is there any tips you would give our listeners on quick and easy nutritional meals? I, I know you mentioned a few things Absolutely. that you can do, but uh, you know, what can I do Absolutely. if I'm limited time? Uh, go, go, go. Yeah. How can I be healthy? Absolutely. One of the things I'm going to suggest is is a, a simple thing which is some meal preparation and and this will help okay. you whether it's yourself or your whole family. Just taking a couple hours out of your week when you either get your groceries or you get your food Uh, however you obtain it and just prepping something so one big thing is prepping breakfast uh-huh. uh, a couple of things i like to make either a, a batch of batch cooking things like um overnight oats um yeah. you know uh, for the whole family so that it's a nutritious uh, fiber dense breakfast and then you just top it with blueberries and cinnamon and it's easy a chia pudding which can be bat- made in batches for the whole family um and contains like literally two ingredients chia seeds great protein and fiber great source of omega 3s coconut milk great fat for your body so you can add that in and little servings that the family can have during the week mm-hmm. and now the easy one for breakfast is instead of making a huge omelet make your omelet mixture and bake it in a cupcake pan so you have mini frittatas for the family okay and by batch cooking that you can freeze them and thaw them in the fridge overnight and you have something ready made 
that's nutritious. Even boiling up some hard-boiled eggs, just make sure they're pastured and a better sauce so that you they're less inflammatory and good good for you. Um, so those are, batch cooking is one of the easy things that we can start with okay. so that you have things. You can also do that with little snack mixes for the mm-hmm. family. Just put together some raw walnuts or almonds, some dark, super dark, extra dark chocolate chips. Make, make your own little quarter cup granola mix baggies for a snack. Having fresh fruit on hand, um, apples, you know, clementines, uh-huh. uh, berries, another easy thing. If they're in the fridge, you know that they're there to grab. Um, and then, you know, prepping things like um, something for a salad for the family, um, having your greens, um, just chopping up some veggies on the weekend, having them in your fridge mm-hmm. so that all you have to do is put it together for a stir fry or salad during the week. And the other big one that I like is sheet pan meal. So cooking, you know, say you eat chicken and you wanted some roasted two or three types of veggies, you just right. cook it for the whole family on a single sheet pan, easy cleanup, sprinkle on your spices and avocado oil, bake, make it in the oven, and you have an entire meal there. So it's, it's, it's about thinking how can we get to that much faster with a little bit of preparation mm-hmm. is sometimes what preparation and planning and less uh, time that day spent chopping vegetables and creating a right. stir fry, but just putting it on a sheet pan or assembling the salad or something like that. Those are just some some of the tips. But chapter 11 of my book, I walk people through, because I know it's hard. I started cooking later in life as yeah. well. Um, and uh, setting up your kitchen, how to think about your grocery lists, how to how to get to be more effective with, with how we're eating. And, well, you know, we all have to start somewhere. Right. Oh, wonderful. Brilliant uh, suggestions there. Uh, you mentioned dark chocolate. Uh, you know, there's yes. there's a lot of going back and forth that dark that chocolate is a brain food. Well, it's it's not because it's loaded with sugar. Um, dark chocolate that has uh, you know very low amounts of sugar can that help to uh, to improve mood, uh, cognitive function, and mood? Yes. Yes. So dark chocolate, and we're, and we're not talking about candy bar chocolate here. Yeah. We're talking about extra dark, raw natural chocolate. Right. Of, I usually try to have people start and go higher. So 80% are darker, but you can start low and, and say 65% and get your palate used to darker because not everyone first likes it. But here's right. the thing. It contains magnesium, serotonin, it, the way that it's made and processed, it's a probiotic. So it's a really great food for us. So it's also the type that doesn't have a lot of added sugars in it. So think about it that way. But pair it with a strawberry or a piece of clementine and it's a great treat for you. Uh-huh. Um, but it's also good for your brain, you know, because I, I think that when we think about treats, we don't want to think about treats that are bad for our brain. So right. that's a good one. And so chocolate, I really support. It helps stress um, and it helps depression. Um, my only caveat about it is it, um, you know, if it ha- harms your, it impacts your sleep because of the caffeine, just be wary right. of that. Have a piece early in the day. Okay. What about coffee? Coffee's, a, so coffee's coffee, an interesting you know, one I, as well. I, I love coffee. I love yeah. coffee and the health benefits speak for themselves. I think with coffee, it's two things. Moder- moderation, having it early in the day. So, um, you know, studies of anxiety looked at people having 400 milligrams or less a day, mm-hmm. tolerated it okay. Um, if you drink a cup of coffee and you feel jittery, that's not for you. So you might have to switch to decaf or get off it completely. Right. Um, and um, it's also the second thing is what you add to it. Mm. So often people are adding in a ton of sugar and processed cream and stuff right. like that. And then it, you know, then it becomes um, less, less of a healthy choice. But coffee right. in its own is, is fine. It's really about moderation, having it early in the day as well. Okay. So in this, um, realm of nutritional psychiatry, there's uh, several papers that I've read about socioeconomic status that some people right. can't afford. There's been interesting studies saying people can't afford to eat good food. And uh, it is interesting, a lot of times grabbing a, a fast food something and uh, you know carbonated drink can be cheaper than, yeah. than uh, cooking good food. So h- how do we overcome that? What, what can we do for people right. of uh, all different... Uh, so, so we all can eat healthy. Sure. So, you know, it's interesting, Dr. Dan, I, I used to think the same thing until yeah. I learned food costing at culinary school. And I've therefore worked with, with patients and families, showing them how 
getting either a from a, a better supermarket getting a rotisserie chicken mm-hmm. for your family say you don't cook or buying a whole chicken and cooking it with some vegetables is actually much more cost effective than buying a fast food meal on for your whole family over x number of days and it really worked out the cost with people to show them and prove it's actually much cheaper to either buy that rotisserie chicken or um, cook the chicken on your own at home. So wow. how can we all do it for ourselves? First, first and foremost, I think that it's learning some tricks in the supermarket, you know, paying attention to where you save on the organic and buy regular uh, produce, choosing, you know, that center aisle for things like canned beans, canned, canned salmon, canned mussels, and, you know, where you can get brain food, but yeah. it could be canned and could be, you can get these at, at, at Walmart. And they are very inexpensive, the, the, the canned salmon and things like that. And you can still be feeding. You can add that to something that you cook for your family in a stir fry and get a healthy meal out of it. Same thing with legumes and beans. Large bags, inexpensive, can cook for a large family, great source of fiber, nutrients, and plant-based protein. So there's, there's a good way to add it in there. And, you know, those frozen foods, like we mentioned earlier, is another way to do it. What I would like people to consider is that, you know, drinking plain water, filtered water, if you can get it, or having a good source of water is is easy hydration versus the carbonated, artificially sweetened drink, Mm -hmm. which sometimes can be three to five dollars. And that fast food meal, I would just challenge you to, to look at the costing behind it. And any one of us may be stuck traveling who knows and and grab one of those it, right. it's not a judgment thing it's how can we how can we think about the rest of the time could we could we rethink that and make make a slightly better choice for our brain health wow so that's wonderful the perception there really isn't uh, really isn't accurate when you look at the hard numbers <laughs> And you're like, certainly, yes, is, I, I've certainly food costed things like certain fast food meals versus just something simple from the supermarket that you can buy and cook or get partially ready-made. So so what about lifestyle? We're creatures of habit. Yeah. Uh, trying to change yeah. lifestyle can be hard. If I want to change yeah. and, and start this approach in order to improve my mood, improve my life, mm-hmm. uh, improve my relationships with those around me, what would you recommend to start to move that lifestyle needle towards the uh, healthier end of the spectrum? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying lifestyle, Dr. Dan, because nutrition really does, is part, really part of lifestyle now. And and we need to be thinking about it that way. So I I personally think it starts small, just a single, if right now today you can make one single habit or change to what you're doing that is better for you. Maybe for someone it's drinking enough water. Maybe for someone else it's, you know, I can maybe not get that sugary donut for breakfast and think about could I batch cook some oats tonight or could I do a chia pudding Mm -hmm. or you know something that replaces it what can I change one thing that I'm doing today even that is a good positive thing I think that where people get get trapped and tend to experience failures when they try to change 10 things at the Uh same time Start small. Start with one or two things that you can do. Maybe you can add turmeric with a pinch of black pepper to a mm-hmm. stir fry or soup or smoothie today. Right there, it's brain healthy spice that is going to give you a lot of benefit. Um, you know, so it's and, and maybe you're going to the supermarket today and you can buy more vegetables, fresh or frozen. Mm-hmm. You know, just a simple thing that you can do right now, or maybe you're ordering a salad for lunch. Add more veggies to it. Have the dressing on the side. Get a vinaigrette instead of you know a creamy ranch dressing. While creamy ranch is delicious, it's it's unfortunately, you know, a lot of the time if we have it at a restaurant, it might be processed. So right. just go with a healthier choice right there. Have the salad, have tons of veggies in it, have your protein of choice, whether it's salmon or chicken, whatever it is you eat. Maybe you have chickpeas because you, you, you are vegetarian. Whatever right. it is, you can do it and just have a vinaigrette instead of something else. So we can, we can if it's on our mind and we're thinking about it, we can make um, a small habit change even today. Wow. This has been absolutely fantastic. Sure appreciate it. Um, are there final thoughts that you would give our listeners? Just that really, Dr. Dan, that it's in, in our control. Unlike uh, a prescription pad where, you know, I've been on the receiving end of receiving a medication when I had cancer. So I know what it's like. So it's, you know, you have to take the medication and you feel a certain way. But, you know, mm-hmm. nutrition is within our power. It's, uh, it's, a, it's our autonomy. We shouldn't feel empowered and realize that our brain health is really at the end of our fork. It, it, mm-hmm. It's how we are eating is affecting our brain health. And if you think about it that way, you'll, you'll you know, make some, some better choices. Wow. 
Wow. Fantastic. Such ac uh, actionable information today. Thank you again, Dr. Uma. Uh, amazing information. Okay, so sure. grateful that you would join us. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan. Great. I appreciate it. And thank you to our listeners. Uh, this is Dr. Dan signing off. The information presented by guests in this podcast is their sole opinion and in no way represents the views of Discover with Dr. Dan, the Proactive Health Podcast, or Brilliant. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not replace professional medical care. Please consult with your medical doctor before making any changes in your lifestyle.